together. Uh, but I don't think we're at the point of courtship yet where we're able to, to make that claim. So instead, I've come up with this kind of uh, rather clunky uh, opening chart, offline versus online, and my own take on it, offline and online. I think there's still a lot of contention around this debate. I think there's a lot of people who are coming at this from a particular perspective and they have their own agendas on both sides, whether you're in advertising or you're in online marketing. We're, we're both holding on to, 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 to what we have in terms of, of the level of investment in, in our businesses. It's understandable, but there's no future in it. The first point I want to make is that uh, I actually get no axe to grind here. I'm the MD of an advertising agency, that's true. But we're also a design consultancy, we also do consulting, and I work with a lot of other companies. So my, my objective is I have a series of clients, I need to give them the best marketing communications solution possible. If online is part of that, then it must be part of that. And, and to that point, we're currently involved with uh, about half our clients in online projects. We're trying to put online on the agenda for most of them. Now, it's not always appropriate, but we should at least interrogate the opportunity, and that's what we do as an advertising agency. What I want to do is talk about three very simple things. I want to talk and explore some of the myths that are surrounding this debate, which I personally think are very, very unhelpful. I think it holds back advertising people, advertising companies. I also think it damages online marketing's credibility to make a business case for itself. I want to talk about some of the facts that move on from some of the myths, and then I want to explore some of the models that derive from some of the facts, if that makes sense. So over the next course of the 20 minutes, uh, let's try and just cover some of this. The first point that I've come across uh, on a number of occasions, actually, uh, I, my background is in Dublin, I spent 11 years down there, and then I came back up to the north three years ago. I've come across a lot of hyperbole everywhere I go in terms of online marketing, and this is, from my view, very, very damaging for uh, the, making the, the, the online case. And just to give you one example, I have a, a client who works in the retail uh, business. She went to a conference about five, six months ago up in North Belfast. And it was a conference on online. She wanted to find out more about online marketing. She knew a lot about advertising. She'd been doing it for the last 10 years. So the guy stands up, a bit like me, and the first thing he says is, you know, nice is out to everybody. I want to just say, advertising is dead. She got up and she left the room. Simple as. And what she said to me afterwards, she goes, I was wanting to get a little bit of information. I was wanting to be educated on online marketing so that I can understand whether I involve it in my marketing plans or not. When I heard that, I just had to leave. That was a completely incredible argument. And from her perspective, that's almost killed the debate for her. Because she's thinking that online marketeers, more often than not, um, are, are tantamount to snake oil merchants. Now that's not right. I know many online marketeers are excellent, absolutely excellent at what they do. But that kind of hyperbola is damaging to the overall debate. It damages us, it damages the marketing communications industry, and it sure damages online marketing. The second point, I suppose, and it's a myth again, is, is this tendency for certain elements of online marketing to, to want to get people like me, advertisers, into a ring and get into a bare knuckles fight. And I don't think that's particularly helpful. I don't, I don't think that's what the nature of the debate is about, but I've come across it on many occasions. This is a quote which you certainly won't be able to read from there, but this is something I came across in, in some of my uh, research for this presentation. And it's from an industry journal called Adma, and this quote was put together by uh, one of the, the heads of one of the major digital agencies in London. And the point he makes is that having 10,000 happy customers online who go on to become powerful advocates for your brand is better than advertising to 1 million, of whom only 40% listen, of which only 10% are interested, of which just 10% actually do something about it. And I'll save you the, the, the mathematical um, aerobatics there. What he's talking about is 10,000 existing customers or, to translate the figures, 4,000 new customers. Now, if his supposition is right, and those existing customers can generate this, these sorts of numbers, then fair enough, I accept his point. But if his supposition is wrong, I would rather go for 4,000 new customers. That's 40% potentially additional revenue. You're not comparing like to like when, when, you, when you have a quote such as that, and there's too much of that, and from my perspective, there's too much of the attempt to actually compare apples with oranges. They do often very different things, complementary things, and that's something that uh, we should all be trying to explore for the benefit of our clients. Some of the facts are about this, and some of the facts are quite surprising. Internet marketing has grown undeniably, but it's evolved. It hasn't been a revolution, it's been an evolution, and it's been over the duration of 9 to 10 years. And the official figures on this, and I promise you this is the ugliest chart that I have in the presentation, the official figures on this would suggest that internet marketing, and this is from the UK, and it's, it's video audited, so it is a trustworthy source. 
Um, online marketing is the total share of all spend has grown from 2% in 2001 to 9% in, sorry, to 11% in 2009. So undeniably it has grown and, and, and nobody, nobody would, would contest that fact. Main media, which often takes the, 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 the punches here from online marketing, has declined. But over a nine year period it's declined by about 4 to 5%. Now that's not uh, huge, it's not massive, and the indications from the latest report uh, in 2010 suggest that there's a little bit of an upturn in, in, in advertising main media. So my point is that main media is, is far from dead. Actually, online marketing continues to grow and it continues to be hugely successful and hugely important, but main media is continuing to hold its own. And what's happening increasingly is that there's an exploration now between how these two things work together to complement each other. Um, in terms of, of generating additional synergies and generating additional business opportunities, and that's what I want to explore. Looking out there, you all seem to be of a certain age, so maybe you do re recognize Logan's Run, do you? You possibly do. I think we need to guard a little bit against the cult of, of the youth. Uh, in marketing, when most of us are probably in marketing, if we come to this uh, particular presentation, 5% of people in marketing are over the age of 50. Uh, the rest of them are, are, are obviously you know, younger, there's about 15% over the age of 40. It's a young person's business and we're young people, relatively, so we think in terms of young people. But we're missing a, a trick when, when we actually do so. When we look at the latest figures on this, and this is from TGI data, which is a, a representative survey of 2,000 people in Northern Ireland, it's 2010 figures. Half of Northern Ireland adults don't actually use the internet regularly, we assume they do, they don't. Half of over 15 years of age people in Northern Ireland don't even use the internet regularly. When we look at Facebook usage, a quarter of uh, the population of over the age of 15 are on Facebook here in Northern Ireland. We've used it within the last week. Three quarters have not. So when we talk about online marketing, we have to also talk about the people who aren't actually online or not online that regularly. Just to explore some of those figures, if we look at the different age cohorts across the top in terms of generational groups, we look at those using the internet three times per week, and what we see is that Generation Y is people up to between the ages of 15 and 29, Generation X, between the ages of 31, 45, Baby Boomers, Silent Generation. Internet usage, regularly internet usage, is up to about two thirds of 15 to 45 year olds, and then it starts to taper off a little bit as we go a little bit older. When we look at those people using Facebook within the last week, what we see is um, quite a, a, a steep decline when we move out of the 15 to 29 year old bracket. And then we're down to a third of 31 45 year olds, and then we dramatically fall off when we get to the older audiences. Those who regularly read a blog, small numbers, regularly small numbers. Now, if you were to take a lot of this on face value, and certainly when I come across various presentations and I come across various articles, you would think that it was a lot higher than that. It isn't. That's where we're at right now in Northern Ireland. Is it higher in the UK? Actually, it is a bit higher in the UK, but it isn't in Northern Ireland. This is what we're dealing with in Northern Ireland. And when we spend £100 on behalf of a client, we have to work with what we have. I picked this chart up recently from a presentation that was done in, in the UK. And it's an interesting chart, and it's, a, it's quite a challenging chart. Uh, not least to actually read from where you're sitting, but what it tells me is that nearly half of regular internet users are actually against following any brand on social media. They're not interested in following the brand on social media. So if you're selling something from a commercial perspective and you want to use social media to do it, you start to see how there are certain limitations. You may want to sell, but they may not want to be sold to. to give you an example, take one of the categories there in motoring. 8% of people said that they would be willing to follow motoring, the, 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 the category, the subject of motoring on social media. So let's say you're a car brand and you want to tap into that. So 8% of the 25%, as we've just seen in the previous uh, data, 8% of 25%, if you're regularly using Facebook, equals 2%. So now you're down to 2%. Now I'm not discounting that that 2% are useful. It could be a useful subgroup. It could be a, you know, a group of loyalists who, who are loyal to the brand and buy your product regularly. And that's absolutely fine, but it's still only 2%. And it's for that reason that traditional media still delivers these are uh, figures from the UK, the figures are even more marked in, in Northern Ireland, but these are recent figures from the UK. And what it tells us is the average hours that people spend on a daily basis with different media channels, and the level of reach up there on the, uh, the other axis, in terms of the ability of that channel to reach a uh, total population. And it comes as no surprise that, that TV, for me anyway, it comes as no surprise that TV, outdoor radio, all deliver and out-deliver any other media channel available. 
Internet is growing, and it's a huge universe, of course, but it is growing. Social networking has got some way to go, a huge way to go, actually, and these are UK figures. Northern Ireland figures are even less than this. From a Northern Ireland perspective, I'm looking at some of the Northern Ireland figures.